chapter 3, and if you remember, the first 12 verses of Proverbs deals with some promises and some principles. And the last time we were in this chapter, we looked at five various ones. And I encourage you to at least take one, to commit it to memory and to live it out. So hopefully you are doing that. I know often... I give us lots of information, and I do have notes available because it's hard to remember all this stuff, right? I speak every week, and I have to remind myself, what did I speak about last week or two weeks ago? So I understand that. And so when we gather together around God's Word, again, that our hearts will be open and that you would give yourself to it, okay? My prayer always is that, God, will you speak through me? Help me not to go beyond what you'd have me to say. But God, help me also not to go below what you'd have me to say and to try to be right on line. And so if our hearts are open, God will speak to us through his word because he offers it to us and uh, gives us his spirit to guide and direct us. Okay, so here we are, Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to do the rest of the chapter. We're going to look at a few principles that I want to encourage you by and that we would give ourselves to. Because wisdom continues to call out to us this very day. One of the names of the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Wisdom. So all wisdom comes from God. It is a grace of God. And she calls to us and says, listen to me. Come to me. Follow after me. And it is one of God's graces to us because God is the source of all wisdom. And in his love of us, he offers us his wisdom. Then we have a choice either to hear, listen, heed, and obey, or decide that we have it all together on our own. That our way is better than God's way. Those who follow their own paths end in places that are unpleasant and in places with uh, increasingly difficult problems. Not to say that God's pathway does not have its challenges, because it does. In this world, you'll have trouble, right? It's one of those promises of God that often we do not claim, okay? We claim his presence, we claim his provision, and we should claim those things. But also, Jesus, in his goodness to us, says that this life has troubles. There are traps, there are snares, there are people who are against God and against his people. And we are to be ones who listen and follow God's wisdom and walk in his pathway. So God, again, in his grace, gives us his wisdom. And we're going to look at it from this chapter today, starting in verse 13 of Proverbs chapter 3. The first point is, gain the blessings of wisdom. Gain the blessings of wisdom and wisdom does indeed carry with her blessings for you. Blessed is the one, verse 13. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom. Blessed is the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than the gain from silver. And her profit is better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. So you see in this section 
that it starts with blessing. Blessed is. Goes on and says, the one who finds, the one who gets, and before, the one who treasures wisdom. Now these things tell us then that wisdom is available, but it isn't always obvious. It requires effort on our part. If we see that something is valuable, we give ourselves over to collect it or to receive it or to gain it. So I ask you, and God asks us a question, how valuable do you esteem God's wisdom? Valuable enough to seek after it and search for it and give yourself in its pursuit? God's wisdom often is just a arm length away from us in His Word. How often is that wisdom set aside for something that's more entertaining? Welcome Facebook or Instagram or sports. Now, I'm not saying those things are bad, but they pale in comparison for the gain you will get from listening to the wisdom of God. It's astounding to me that we who have the Word of God in a myriad of translations at our fingertips in our cell phones, in our pockets every day, and how little often we give ourselves over to reading them and having them read us. It's astounding to me. The very creator of the universe gave us in his goodness, which he did not have to do, his word, his wisdom, his heart and mind. And so wisdom here is personified in one who is calling out to us. Come and listen and learn. And that wisdom calls out even this day. Are you and will you listen? And then it provides for us motivation to give ourselves to understanding and to seek God for his wisdom with the promise of the gain from God's wisdom is better than any fat paycheck that you can pursue. Better than silver, better than gold, better than a great stock portfolio or a sweet piece of property. So many People give themselves for more green, thinking that they'll get a greater profit, than by, seeing, by seeking a God who gives us greater gain from his wisdom. This passage is uh, personal to me. It's personal to me in, in this way. In 2000, excuse me, in 2000, Uh, My wife and I and our two small young children, we purchased this house in Minnesota, okay? No driveway, no garage, okay? Just moved on this little piece of property, and we were grateful. We lived there for a number of years, and then God called us out four years later, um, excuse me, yeah, called us out four years later to move to a, a church up in northern Minnesota, And we had to sell that house that we loved and that we were grateful for. So we sold our house, moved into a parsonage, and did ministry up in this community for about four years. Now, we had some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful times and ministry experiences in that church. And we had some difficult, 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 difficult times in ministry in that church. It was hard. God then called us down here to Rockford in 2004. And the very weekend that we stayed with my in-laws in the Twin Cities, we drove down from northern Minnesota to their place, and then we're going to drive down over here to Rockford. That very weekend, that very house that we owned sold for $100,000 more than we bought it. And I was angry. Being, being, being honest. 
I, and I saw that, and, and, and it was literally, I don't know how I saw it, but it was in the paper. It was like, this, you know, it's it sold for, I think we drove by, oh, that's what we did. We drove by it. We drove by the house, um, just to see our old house, and then we had a sold sign on it. I'm like, I wonder how much it sold for. What? Back in 2004, uh, still $100,000, a lot of money. <laughs> Right? And I was like sitting in my U-Haul that actually broke down on the way to Rockford, right? Stick shift junker, right? I, and I was complaining to God. I'm like, so this time in, in Minnesota, excuse me, northern Minnesota cost me $100,000. If we would have just say, stayed there, we could have sold it. And the Lord pointed me to this passage, <laughs> and it comforted me. And he said to me through this word that the wisdom that I gained from that experience was far greater than a $100,000 profit on a house. That immensely helped me. God, I know that your plan is better than mine. And what I gained in that experience was more valuable than what I quote-unquote lost in this place. That helped me. And that should help you as well. To gain the blessings of wisdom. And God goes on and describes some of these blessings. You see this in verse 16. Long life is in her right hand. Now, of course, people do die of things like cancer and heart disease. What he's promising is a life that stretches beyond our life. It may include a number of years added to our life, but it stretches, our life stretches way beyond even our days. Long life is in the right hand of of wisdom. With wisdom, God extends to us a legacy that is beyond us. And in her left hand are riches and honor. And these riches come in various forms, my friend. Some of the richest people that I know are folks in India who have barely anything, but they have so much love and honor in their community because of God's goodness to them. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. Her paths are paths of peace. She is, wisdom is, a tree of life. Don't you like that? Trees that are planted, okay, not vines that you have to plant again like my cucumber patch every year i have to get new seeds i have to redo the whole thing a tree is there and year after year after year after year it produces fruit just like wisdom what wisdom provides money cannot buy these are the things that people are hoping that money can buy pleasantness Peace, prosperity, longevity, life. Those things are found in the hand of God and in His wisdom. So I implore you today, seek it. God, what are you saying in my circumstance? in my job, in this relationship, in my choice. God, what would your word direct me? God, what is your wisdom? Wisdom is offered generously by God to us for those who ask. So the question is not, is there wisdom available? The question is, are we asking for it? That's up to you. We, my prayer is that we as a church would seek God's 
wisdom, and therefore that wisdom would be gained, and therefore there's a blessing in it. So I implore you to do so. Pray, read, ask, seek. God's promise will be true to you, and you will receive those blessings. And that might be a passage you just need to underline and you need to highlight, and I want you to meditate on these things. Think about them, okay? There's a lot more, but do that, please. Second thing we run into in this passage as we continue to read is to use the power of wisdom. So there's a blessing in gaining wisdom, and it can be ours if we seek it, and then use the power of wisdom. And the writer of this psalm, which is Solomon, says this, and uh, notices something about God and what he did through wisdom. This is verse 19. The Lord himself, by wisdom, founded the earth by understanding He established the heavens by His knowledge. The deeps broke open and the clouds drop down the dew. There is power in wisdom. God himself, the giver and creator of wisdom, the giver and creator of all things, used wisdom when he established the earth, when he created the stars. Pay attention to creation. Have you ever watched a documentary about our world? There's one that I watched that I thought was really, really good. Will Smith, you guys know Will Smith? Okay, he narrates it. It's called One Strange Rock, right? Talking about how amazing it is that we have a planet like ours that does what it does. If our strange rock we lived in were just a couple degrees closer to this sun, guess what? Barbecue time, and we're on the grill, okay? Fried up. If we were just a few degrees, just a little bit farther away from the sun, we would be the frozen chosen, right? No life. It's amazing (laughs) that even the oceans, how there's tides and it stirs things up. And there's all of this multitude of life that lives together. It's amazing. And he he talks about the dew here. How is it that you have this liquid that sometimes solid can turn into vapor and gets sucked up in the atmosphere? Tons of water in the air. And the salt is taken out of it, and it's transported over to an area of land, and then at the right time, it allows the rain to come down that nourishes life that grows. It's incredible that our bodies heal themselves. Aren't you grateful for that? Could you imagine if we got a cut and it never healed? We'd probably all live to be three, right? Our body heals itself. Our eyes work. Our systems in our body function perfectly and on and on and on and on. How did this come to be? I'm going to tell you it did not come to be by chance or accident. There is an intelligent design and a powerful Creator. And all of this was achieved and accomplished through wisdom. God's wisdom helps us to create. You and I can use His wisdom to create as well. 
And I'm not saying you're going to create a new universe, but you can create an organization, a family, a book, a song, something, mechanisms of life through wisdom, that it works together and it comes into existence through Wisdom. Wisdom is a powerful force. Even God uses wisdom. And then asks us and gives us wisdom as well. It says, use this. It's a gift to you. So I want to encourage you to think about your life, to think about the problems, to ask God for help and then imply it, implore it. It will serve you well. Just don't go along life allowing it to happen to you. You happen to it. right? One of God's good gifts to us is the gift of work. That was a mixed review right there. (laughs) Yay. Gift of a mind, gift of time, gift of abilities. Use what is given to you in our short life. Use wisdom and see God create something through you. Next. Next point. Enjoy the protection of wisdom. You'd be blessed if you gain it. You are encouraged. We are encouraged to use it. And then to enjoy the protection that wisdom provides. This is verse 21 through 26. Let's read this. My son, my daughter, my child, don't lose sight of these. Always keep in your mind sound wisdom along with discretion, discernment, ability to make good choices. And they will be life for your soul and an adornment around your neck. Then, when you do these things, another conditional promise, then when you do this, you will walk on your way securely and... Your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you won't be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Amen to that. So I'll take a nap, right? Do not be afraid of sudden terror or of the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence. Underline that. And he will keep your foot from being caught. Don't you like this? These are all given to us as protections. Because again, this world is not the safest of safe place. There are places in this world and people in this world in traps of a supernatural foe that want to snare you, that want to entangle you, that want to kill, steal, and destroy life because he is against the giver of life. These things are are among us and God gives us wisdom to help us. I want us to be wise 
people because we reflect a wise God. Are you hearing me? God, the giver of wisdom, offers us protection and gives us participation in this process. We have to keep wisdom and discretion. God, what is wise in this relationship for me to do? God, what is wise in this situation for me to do? God, what is wise with how I'm spending myself, spending my money, spending my energy, spending my time? What is the wise thing to do? Often when we make foolish decisions, we're not asking that question. We're asking the question of, what do I want right now? And often, these things lead to other things which bring us in places that are not helpful. The people who get in the most trouble in life, I've observed this, as what I've called emotionally driven decision makers. Having our emotions lead the train of our life, what we feel like doing. Does that often end up in good places? Not often. Feelings are important, but feelings should be the caboose and wisdom should be the train, right? The engine that brings us forward. So ask, what is wise in this circumstance? Keep it in your mind's eye. Use discretion. Think about things before you act upon them. When you do, you will walk on your way securely. Your foot won't stumble into bad things, investments, or in, in any way, in, in, into um, situations or relationships or into some type of sinful behavior that will pull us aside and rob us of our sleep and give us heartbreak. Wisdom will protect us. So our foot won't stumble. Our pathway is full of life. And light, we have nothing to hide. We don't have to be afraid of sudden terror because we've thought things through. And the Lord will be your confidence. Don't you like that? The Lord will be your confidence. Because He has given Himself to us, we have given ourselves to Him. We're in the security of the lifeboat of his love, and he will not fail you. Keep your foot from being caught. So if you are concerned about getting caught into something that's not good, seek wisdom. If your sleep at night is troublesome because you don't see how the the things will fit together, seek the wisdom of God. It is offered to us, and God would want you to enjoy its protection. Give yourself to it. Next we read, and again, these passages are dense, and they're helpful, and they're powerful. God implores us, and we live in our neighborhood, and each of us live in a neighborhood, be it in an apartment, or a community, or a neighborhood saying, this is my wisdom as you live together. Do these things. So this is the point. Be the neighbor of wisdom. You know that not all neighbors get along. (laughs) Hallelujah, pastor. They don't. (laughs) Remember moving into our neighborhood where we live now, uh, not too far away from here, just south. Um, meeting our new neighbors, and like one after another said, nice to meet you, let me tell you about so-and-so. And you go over to the next neighbor, it's like, yeah, glad you're here, but I got a couple things to tell you about so-and-so. It's like, oh, Lord. By the way, you know you're a missionary to your neighborhood? Come on. You think you're here for... No reason? You're not. You're a missionary to your neighborhood. I want you to think like a missionary. Missionaries go in, the good missionaries go in. 
to make a difference for the gospel in the community that they live in. If you're having problems with your neighbors, you're responsible for your part in it, go say I'm sorry. Thank you, Matthew. Excuse me, I'm drooling on myself. It's just not uncommon. <laughs> So let's see what it says. Do not withhold, this is verse 27, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go, come back tomorrow, I will give it. When you have it with you. Do not plan evil against your neighbor. You see the context here. Don't plan evil against them. Who dwells, who lives trustingly beside you. Do not contend with a man, with a woman, for no reason. And when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence. Do not choose any of his or her ways. For the devious person, check this out, is an abomination to the Lord. But the upright are in his confidence. I want the time when you move away from your current residence that your neighbors will be sad that you're going. I want them to have a party in your honor versus have a party that you're gone. And I'm speaking to the crabby Christians. Crabbiness is not a fruit of the Spirit. I'm glad someone laughed. Not that we don't have our hard times, we do. Here's the advice. Okay, I'm going to sum it up here. We have communion as well. One other point after this. Number one, verses 27 and 28, help your needy neighbor. If you have something that you can loan to them, loan it to them. Okay. If they need some eggs, give them eggs. <laughs> if you have a post hole digger, let them use it. Right? <laughs> this is fun. I like this, okay? Do that. Loan them these things. If you have something good in your house, give it to them, right? Don't like, well, I'm not going to let you use it because you might break it. Or if I give you my two eggs, then I won't have breakfast myself. Give it away. You don't trust God to provide for you? Come on. Help your needy neighbor, right? In word or deed or help them. I'm the neighborhood handyman, okay? A lot of single folks, a lot of single ladies around where I live, okay? They know I have tools, right? This, that, and the other thing. I even watch someone's cat. That's above and beyond, thank you. Extra grace. <laughs> Be that person, right? Be that person in your neighborhood. You're a missionary. Wisdom says help your neighbor. <laughs> Second, verses 29 and 30, protect your innocent neighbor. You catch this? Don't take advantage of your neighbors, right? Treating them badly. Throwing your dog deposits into their yard. I got neighbors who do that. Moving the fence posts, you know, leaving your trash all around. Protect them, watch out for them. It's wise. And in turn, believe me, they'll watch out for you. You can change the neighborhood. Guess how God's going to change Rockford? Look around. You're a part of the solution. 
Lastly, in this section, avoid, avoid your violent neighbor. Right? Verses 31 and 32. Don't learn to be a violent person or use violence against them. And there is violence even in my neighborhood. Even across the street. Fist fights and all of these things. It's not the way to solve problems. Don't be a violent person or take advantage of your neighbors or cause harm to them. Know that the Lord will deal with them and choose to live uprightly. You see that in the last part of the verse. But the upright are in his confidence. A devious person is an abomination. To be the neighbor of wisdom. Be that person. Again, you may not highlight this. The Lord might be highlighting something in your mind and saying, oh, I really don't like so-and-so, or I really don't like so such and such. Ask God what he would have you do in that relationship. Last point. <clears throat> inherit, inherit the honor of wisdom. Wisdom will bring you honor. Let's hear what it has to say, verse 33. The Lord's curse, do you like that? The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked. But he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Toward the scorners, those who would scorn him, God scorns them as well. But to the humble, he gives favor. The wise will inherit honor. It's a good memory verse. The wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. Believe me, you want the blessing of God on your household. And you say amen. The blessing of God comes through the goodness of God. The goodness of comes. Goodness of God comes to us through us in humility, seeking Him, following Him, listening to Him, embracing Him. And in so doing, we will live an honorable life and in an Living an honorable life, God will honor you and people will recognize these things. It's a beautiful thing. It's a sad thing as well, but a beautiful thing to do a funeral for someone who has lived an honorable life. They're honored. And rightly so. Choose to be a person of honor. And to become a person of honor, you need wisdom. And in order to obtain wisdom, you need to seek the Lord. That honor is greater than any gain you'll get by being devious or destructive or demanding or self-centered. Choose honor. So many honorable people in this place. Bless you for that. We honor you for that. And God will honor you for that. So I'm going to conclude and we're going to transition to communion. Please think about what we talked about from the Word today. Okay. Highlight, meditate, be grateful for. Seek, look, cling to the wisdom of God. Follow His guidance and you will be blessed and benefited. I encourage you to spend time to employ and apply these things to your heart and mind. That you would rejoice and be glad.